Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. At the end of the last video, I was hacking madly away trying to get this to work, um, and I didn't, which is probably a good thing because I was doing some hardcore hacking. It was bad. I'm going to go ahead and get this to work and then refactor. Um, so first I need, let's, let's not call this listeners too, I mean, geez, focus listener. Um, focus listeners and then what is it going to need it's oh it's not going to be an action listener it's going to be a focus listener there we go and we're going to say focus lost and that should lead to the value being changed expected 670 was 668 perfect so now we need to have uh, in here come on uh, I believe we want to focus adapter yeah Same code again. Okay, and the test should pass now. Didn't though, why not? Well, let's take this out. We should at least be seeing that we have a focus listener. Yeah, um, and then if we take this out, we should see that we don't have a focus listener. Oh, okay, so there's some sort of basic bug here. Yeah. Okay, so we should have a focus listener. Should have a focus listener. Expected one was three. Interesting. We've already got three focus listeners, and we didn't even write any code around it. Um, hmm. Well, one of the things I saw in my research into how to poke at these events was that focus listeners were pretty low level, and you wouldn't necessarily want to do, do something like that. I said earlier that I didn't want to do have a change on every change of the document due to... Uh, a potential slowness and just it would be distracting but I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to using a document listener because I think that's more appropriate um, now I'm not seeing a doc how a way of getting the document listeners unlike the focus listener I guess I can say get document dot get Come on. So we got the document. Um, there's add document listener. Remove document listener. I don't see anything about the actual document listeners. I'm going to pause the video and do a little research and be back in a few. Okay, I'm back. You know, I didn't find anything about getting the document listeners, but uh, it occurred to me as I was doing the search that it's quite possible that calling set text will cause the document listener to be triggered, uh, which means that I could avoid doing all this really nasty stuff about manually triggering the events. Uh, I'd also only need, I would only need one event handler. So let's go ahead and uh, see what happens just sort of in a spike, as a spike. Uh, let's go ahead and add document listener. Oh, I think we have to get the document. And for document listener, do we have an adapter? Um, 
I'm not seeing it. No, no easy way of having that go. So I'm just going to have this print a star every time that event is fired. Oh, I forgot to commit at the end of the last episode. I think. a disaster. So it's not showing up at all for some reason. Do we have to do Do I just not have system out? Let's see what happens. Oh, right. I don't want to run tests. I want to run my spike. There we go. Interesting. If I'm going to handle the document listener properly, I've got to... There's got to be a better way to do this. All right, I'm going to pause the video, do a little more research. Back in a few. Okay, I'm back. Um, I did a quick review of the documentation, didn't see anything. Uh, so, I don't know, this will have to be good for now. I do need to check to see that uh, set text will do what I think it does, uh, which is to say, uh, sorry, I'm not being very clear. I need to check to make sure that set text will trigger one of these events. So, let's do that. Uh, if it does, then on startup, I should see, not only should I see foo in the field, but I should see a letter down here on the, yeah, it's on I. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, there we're good. Okay. So, I think what I can do then is... I don't need to do this, 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 or this. I should just say that the application model should have been updated. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and I don't need this. And I don't need this. And I just need this to do the right thing. Oops, wrong one. So now we'll run the test here. We got a null pointer exception. So I think if I just say handle event, oh, um, What am I doing here? I'm not handling the event. Oh, update application model.
trying to create screechingly obvious code, as, Al as Alistair Coburn would say. Um, more specifically, I'm also trying to not uh, write the same code multiple times. And I think that will work. Oh, it does. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so this is going to be um, starting balance. Actually. That's going to be starting balance. That's going to be value. Yeah. There we go. I think that's what I want. So here we have the test working, and it's no longer a spike. This is real. I think, oh, fingers crossed. I think that's going to work. Look at that. That's cool. I love it. Um, yeah. Oh, it really dislikes being. <laughs> um, the lack of a proper air handling in there is uh, showing. But other than that, you know, this is pretty cool. And it's, you know, no problems with speed whatsoever. Um, it's just fine. So. That's great. I'm really happy with that. So that works. And I think, let's see, we've got some, got some errors, which I suspect are just due to uh, imports needing to be organized. Yeah, so our warnings are gone. How many tasks, or we don't have any tasks open. Okay, so that I think brings us to the end of another uh, expansion cycle. We've added some new features. They work now, although they're definitely not perfect. Um, next up is going to be to start contracting. Um, this code is okay. It's, I mean, yes, the tests are ugly. This code is okay. I'm, a, I'm pretty happy with that. The fact that it's public, public bothers me a bit, but I'm willing to live with it. Um, I think the rest of the code is still looking pretty good. So let's take a look. Got all kinds of things to do. And I next episode, that's what we're going to pick up with. We're going to do all this stuff that's in the scratch pad. Um, we're going to have to do the remaining fields, of course. That's separate. We're going to have to do that, I think, can wait. That can wait. So let's put this in sort of a next up bucket. Uh, should stock market year be immutable? We need to answer that question. Should, uh, yeah, we probably ought to do that. I think those are less important than doing the, the text parsing, though. Um, and this is important. So really, the next big thing, I think, is, is handling the text parsing, um, particularly exception handling. So that's what we'll pick up with next time. I'm really happy about this. We've, we're starting to get something that looks like a real application, and that is awesome. So pretty cool stuff. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I will catch you next time.